I'm on a mission to find the best and least expensive thermal imaging devices on the market. My goal is to help more hunters be more successful by putting this technology into their packs. Without that thermal, zero chance of finding this deer. Zero. In this video, I'm going to give you my full, honest review of this Infrared T2 Pro thermal imaging device that plugs right into your phone. And we're going to see if this tiny thermal camera can compete with more traditional thermal monoculars from FLIR and AGM. Guys, I gotta be honest, I'm shocked. I don't know what to make of these results. Hog hunters, predator hunters, listen up. And if you like what you see, I'm gonna give you a coupon code good for $20 off one of these T2 Pros from Infrared's Amazon shop. I'll put the discount code and the links to the Amazon store down in the description. Let's go. Thermal technology looks for radiated heat from a subject. So it's looking at the difference in temperatures between various objects. That means it can also detect where something warm was recently, just like my son's footprints in this clip. By comparison, night vision depends on infrared light reflecting off of a subject. Each one has its own applications. A thermal monocular doesn't need ambient light or additional infrared flashlights in order to operate. And you can see around some brush to help you follow your subject. Thermal technology, in particular, less expensive thermal technology generally offers less detail than night vision. Again, we're talking about lower price points here. Unless you stumble onto a really high quality thermal unit at a very low price. We love thermal monoculars for a variety of hunting purposes, including scouting, tracking, and the retrieval of down game, or even home security. You just gotta have one. Let's go ahead and unbox this thing. We're gonna get our first look at it right here live with you guys. All these packages are sealed, so this is the first that we're gonna see this thing. And my first impression is, there's a lot in this box. There's the unit itself, this white bubble wrap thing, and a cardboard box. It looks a little bit intimidating. I hope it's not a ton to set up and assemble. First look inside the box here, looks like we've got a quick start guide right here on top in multiple languages. I'm sure that's helpful. Then there's also this little receipt ticket looking thing. Don't lose this because it's going to tell you whether you have an infrared search or an Xtherm series product to make sure you get the right app. Now we get to the case that I can only assume is the unit itself. It looks really small and compact even when it's inside the case. It's so light in your hand, it's not going to take up any- Whoa! This thing is tiny! Oh my gosh, by comparison to these thermal monoculars that are handheld units, this is so, so small. It's not gonna take up any room in your pack. It's not gonna add any weight. It comes with a little lens cap on there. There's your little lightning port that's gonna plug into your phone. Let's go ahead and see what else we got here. It looks like just a cleaning cloth. Onto the cardboard box, I'll describe things just in the order that they come out. It looks like we've got some mounting plates, screws, and a couple of different adapters for your different phone connections. I'm sure all that's really helpful. Got a couple of Allen wrenches here to help you attach this to whatever you're attaching it to. Then there's this Picatinny rail mounting bracket, which I have to assume is really useful. Now on to the bubble wrap package. This thing feels like it's got a lot in it. I'm immediately drawn to this laser sight. Initially, I can't imagine what you'd need this thing for with a thermal camera. The more I think about it, I bet this is gonna help you focus in on one particular hotspot. I can see an Allen wrench in here, a Picatinny rail adapter to attach it to whatever device. It looks like you've got a lightning cord extension cable and some type of little shoe here for a mounting bracket. There are a couple of big pieces in here. This looks like a pistol grip handle and a mounting bracket, probably for your phone, that we're gonna use to actually hold the unit up and point it in whatever direction at our subjects. Here's a recap of everything in the package. A little bit intimidating, but not nearly as many parts as I expected at first. Let's see how it performs. Range test time, baby. We're out here at this big field behind my house where we can do a controlled distance test for this unit, one from AGM and one from FLIR. And honestly, I have no idea what to expect. We set up for a side-by-side -side comparison using tripods and monopods to keep everything as stable and consistent as possible. We use a range finder to keep our measurements precise. About 13 steps. But we immediately had problems on this day with equipment breaking and high winds. All right. So we had to go old school. Our actors today are Pepper the Small Hog and Afton the Beautiful Doe. Up first, we'll put the Infrared T2 Pro up against the FLIR Scout TK, which is a significantly higher priced unit. I can immediately see exceptional detail on the Infrared. I'm actually blown away by what I'm seeing here. Look at the amount of detail that you can see on the subjects in the foreground and on the background on the T2 Pro. The FLIR does a pretty good job in its price point, but the Infrared is immediately superior. I'm actually blown away. As we go through these comparisons, I'll cycle through the color palettes on both units at each 25 yard interval. 
I'll give you the AGM comparison in just a minute. We'll do one comparison at a time. Why don't you step on back uh, 25 yards? Here we are at 50 yards. The infrared is still looking great and the FLIR looking okay. I'm not going to zoom in on the infrared until we get to the AGM comparison. The FLIR doesn't have a zoom on it. It wouldn't be fair. Now at 75 yards, I can start to see some more differences surfacing that are worth calling out. The infrared is still looking great. I can see good definition and I can tell the subjects in the foreground apart from the background. I can still see a fair amount of detail on the FLIR, but the subjects are starting to wash out against some other warm objects in the background. The infrared seems to shine a little bit more here. At 100, this is even more pronounced. On the infrared, I can tell the subjects in the foreground from the background. I can tell there's Afton out there, the doe, Pepper the small hog. I can tell them apart. I can see what I'm looking at. That's a safety issue. A lot better detail on the infrared at this distance than the FLIR. The FLIR, I can see heat signatures, but I can't tell what I'm looking at. I can't tell what's forward, what's behind. I can't tell what the subjects are. It's all washed out. It's a big glob of heat. Now, if you were using these for the retrieval of down game and all you need to do is find a heat signature, totally fine. If you were using this to try to identify a target, the FLIR is going to struggle at this distance more than the infrared. All right, let's switch it up and compare to the AGM, which is a lot more comparable from a price perspective. I'm really curious to see how these two compare. Right out of the gate, this doesn't even look fair. I have seen this AGM perform better on different days. Maybe it was something about the ambient conditions. It was warm. There wasn't a large temperature differential between your subjects and everything else around. So maybe that affected it. But the AGM just isn't even competing here. The infrared has so much more detail, at least here at 25 yards. As before, I'll go ahead and cycle through the color palettes with both units and then move back in 25 yard increments. And I'm going to give you a look at the zoom features on both of these two at 75 and 100 yards. As the distance increases, the gaps between these two are starting to widen. Here at 50 yards, noticeable detail on the infrared. I can see what I'm looking at in the foreground. I can see Pepper the small hog, Afton the doe. I can tell exactly what I'm looking at. The AGM, overall foggy. At 75 yards, the same thing is true. I'm beating a dead horse here. A lot more detail on the infrared. AGM is washed out, especially against those objects in the background that are giving off some heat as well. Let's take a look at the zoom features though. As I've said before in some other videos, my review of this AGM in particular, the digital zoom is just not useful. It's so foggy, I can't tell what in the world I'm looking at. By comparison, the zoom on the infrared is actually excellent. I'm zooming in on the subjects and I'm not losing a heck of a lot of detail as I'm doing it. Looks very good. At 100 yards, no surprise here. Without any zoom on, the infrared continues to outperform the AGM by a wide margin. Now, if I look at the zoom on both units, the infrared again impresses with its zoom at this distance. The AGM, again, not even useful. If you can't pick out the subjects against the background without the zoom on the AGM, the zoom's not gonna help you. Now, this last one I found a little bit funny. On this last attempt to zoom in with the AGM, it is so much blurrier than the infrared, I actually lost the subjects. The subjects are over here on the left-hand side and I zoomed in on the background, not able to tell the difference. That tells you everything you need to know. Guys, I gotta be honest, I'm shocked. I don't know what to make of these results. This unit performed so much better than I expected. I mean, the, the detail out there at 25, 50, 75, 100 yards was absolutely amazing. It really outperformed both of the units that I was comparing it to. The AGM really struggled today in these conditions. I think the ambient conditions were just throwing it a little bit. But this unit really outperformed even the FLIR at a much lower price point. Now, here's where I'm a little bit concerned. I don't know if what I'm seeing is just a higher quality thermal unit or if I'm just seeing so much more detail because it's kind of piggybacking off of a high quality camera on my iPhone. I think I need to come out here when I can just isolate this thermal unit and kind of nullify the iPhone camera. Call it middle of the night. The camera won't be able to see anything and I'll be able to tell whether this thermal is really doing that good of a job or if it's piggybacking on the iPhone. I'm optimistic based on what I just saw. So I went out in search of some wild hogs. Heck, I would have been happy with a squirrel, raccoon, or anything. I was really anxious to see how this thing performed in the pitch night. Now, as it happened, I didn't see any of those things. I mean, not one thing was moving in the woods that night. I have no idea why, but I think I saw all that I needed to see out of the infrared. Here it is compared to the AGM. Need I say more? Look at the detail on the trees, the ground. You can see my feeder in the background. It is non-existent imperceptible on the AGM, just totally foggy in the same ambient conditions. So I think I have my answer. Even if there's some kind of post-processing going on in the app itself, the extra detail I'm seeing is not due to the iPhone camera. Let's take a look at the specifications of each unit and see how the T2 Pro stacks up. I can't go through all of these, so I'll just hit the most interesting points. 
First thing you'll notice, size and weight. The T2 Pro is tiny and weighs nothing. Magnification is impressive at 2 to 15x, and it's actually a useful zoom, not like the AGMs. Color palettes are adequate, but what I really like on this page is the price. The T2 Pro is currently available on Amazon for $400, comparable with the AGM using the discount code that I gave you, and a lot cheaper than the FLIR. Now here's where it gets interesting. These are the specs that make a thermal a thermal. I'm looking here for what gives the T2 Pro its edge over the other two. Now, this isn't a master's class in thermal monoculars, but suffice it to say, in technical terms, this gets pretty darn complicated pretty darn fast because all these factors work together all the time. The objective lens is quite large. Actually, the whole unit's pretty much a lens at 13 millimeters is right between the AGM and the FLIR. The important spec here is the higher sensor resolution for a similar pixel pitch, which produces greater sensitivity and a better image. I'm still not 100% sure if the image quality is all due to that, or if there's some post-processing going on in the app or on the iPhone, but do I care? Nope. Even if it was, it all works together well. So the first thing I notice is that connecting the T2 Pro directly to my phone isn't gonna work with the case on. Now, if I was using the lightning extension cable with the pistol grip handle setup that came with the unit, this would not be a problem. But for my purposes, I'd rather attach it directly to my phone, so I just remove the case and the T2 Pro connects with no problem. This way, everything's light and compact. While we're at it, remember you can turn the lens to focus the image on the screen. Let's see what happens when we connect the T2 Pro. The app is gonna ask for permission to connect to the device, click allow, and the app gets going. This takes just a few seconds. To keep the screen from moving around and being too distracting during this demonstration, I'm gonna put the lens cap back on. Let's start with the settings, or the setup button here. First thing you'll see is a radio button to toggle between Celsius and Fahrenheit depending on what part of the world you're in. There's a temperature compensation setting that I don't quite understand. I'm assuming it recalibrates the unit based on the range of ambient temperatures, but as I tested it, I didn't see much of a difference at any setting. I just leave it on 32 degrees Fahrenheit and it works just fine. There's a setting to adjust the temperature measuring distance. Again, I don't see much noticeable difference by adjusting this setting, but I'm sure if you were looking for ultimate precision at a certain distance, this could be a benefit. Most everything I want to look at is beyond the max of 20 meters in this setting anyway. Turn the logo on and off on the screen with this setting. Good for expanding your view and also removing that logo if you were screen recording. Turning on the camera setting activates the camera on the phone. Remember, I have the lens cap on the thermal unit, so this is the built-in iPhone camera, in case I wanted to see through that with thermal attached. Turning on temperature units is interesting. Here it'll show you the actual temperature measurements at different points on the sensor, or screen. Here you can rotate the screen depending on how you want to hold the phone. There are a lot of options here, too many to cover in one video, but the menu is user-friendly and easy to navigate. Leaving the settings, if you click on the pictures button, you access the photo library, and here are the pictures and videos I've taken with the T2 Pro. The video camera turns video recording on, video counter appears at the bottom of the screen when the recording is in progress. Another touch of the video button turns it off. This colorful little button brings up the available color palettes. This crosshair button brings up a set of crosshairs on the screen. Using some available brackets, you can mount this in front of a scope. Not something I would do, but I guess you could. And there are adjustments you could make to try to zero it from here. This button with a bunch of dots looks like it turns on hotspot tracking. As soon as I can focus on the four-wheeler that was just on, you'll see hotspots highlighted on the muffler here. That's very cool and useful. Tracking the hottest point on the screen can be helpful in a variety of hunting applications. This little shutter button seems to recalibrate the unit. So that's it. Very straightforward operation, and without doing a lot of reading, you can put this T2 Pro into use. For you folks that hunt at night like I do, there is one consideration that's probably floating around in your mind. I was wondering if I could really whip out my cell phone when I was sitting there in a tree stand in the dark. My concerns were, would my cell phone, even on the lowest brightness setting, light up my face? Or would animals potentially to the side of me or behind me get spooked if I was moving around in the tree stand? Here's an experiment showing me in my bathroom. I was really encouraged to see that even in total darkness, you really can't see my face on the lowest brightness setting on the phone. Now. You can see this cell phone kind of floating around, which is meant to simulate me looking around in the tree stand. So you do want to limit your movement. Does this mean you can't use this type of thermal when you're hunting at night? Absolutely not. Just limit your movements. Be cognizant of the way you're turning. But you're going to do that anyway, right? That's it for us, you guys. I was absolutely blown away by the quality available in this T2 Pro for $400. You guys better get your hands on one. Thank you for being with us. We wish you all the success in the world, in the woods, and on the water. God bless. We'll see you next time.